What's up guys, this is Wences. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about creating an epic life on your terms. Today we're talking about INFJs under stress. And INFJs who are under a lot of stress probably don't look like the typical person you would imagine would look under stress. It's not necessarily that you're always running around and getting stuff done. Stress is mainly caused and felt on the inside as we all know. And for us, it can't even be observed. So today we're gonna talk about what causes that kind of stress, how you can overcome it and how you can live stress-free and excited about life all together. Before we get started, I want to remind you if you want to take the next step in creating an epic life on your terms, then work with me privately all the information you find below. So why is it that it's so hard to distinguish if you're under stress or not? Well, as I said, for INFJs, it is something that is internal most of the time. You won't be seeing us doing that many things. Yes, there are INFJs who work a lot. There are a lot of INFJs who are busy, who do like things from morning till evening, but that's not necessarily the only way it comes out. Most of the time you find out that INFJs are under stress when you feel like you have nothing left to give. There is just no energy in you, you feel completely depleted, and the worst thing about it is you don't know how this happened and you don't know how to get out of it. Many people say for INFJs who are really under stress it always comes out as the SE grip. SE being extroverted sensing, the inferior functions in INFJ. And being in the grip of it means that you're constantly living in that mode. That means you keep on doing things and you already know that at some point you would have to let go of this. This is not something you could sustain for the rest of your life. But for some reason, you feel like you have no other choice. Maybe it's because you would feel like you would be a complete loser, you wouldn't be enough, you don't have another choice, you would be abandoned, you would lose your job, and the list goes on and on. But this is where most of those discussions end. It's like, okay, if you're under stress, it's probably because you're under the SE grip. But nobody really talks about why are you in that SE grip to begin with? And that does not come from SE. Because the reason why we get into the SE grip is because we have an image in our mind, something that we have created through our introverted intuition. We have then given it a system, we have then given it meaning through introverted thinking and that whole thing we now want to project on the outside and we want to do it in a very particular way. So let's make this practical because I know this was rather abstract. A way of doing this would be, I love to be at peace. I love to feel like I can relax, I can be my own person, I can go through life and everything is fine. But the only way I feel I can do that is if I show up in a certain way because only that would tell me that I deserve it. This could happen, for example, because of some kind of value system you've been given as a kid probably from some authority figure, which has taught you, you have to be always productive or you have to be a better person, you have to put yourself last and all of those stories. This is something we have internalized. And in order to internalize that, we use our introverted thinking. Remember, our introverted thinking is our third function, meaning it's not as strong as we always would like it to be. We love introverted thinking and if we're not careful, we really lean into it way too much, meaning we believe in it like nothing else. So if you've been taught these value systems as a kid, then this is your truth. The truth which happened through TI, your introverted thinking, right? You have this vision, I want to live this peaceful life, I want to feel like I'm part of society, I want to feel like I'm part of the group, I'm a good person, the list goes on and on. In order for me to deserve that, I have the value system that I have to play by certain rules. Remember, this can be anything that you're carrying with yourself. And if you ask yourself what these things are in your life, it's rather easy to observe them. But most of us don't even go there. We don't question it because it's like saying, yeah, of course I'm in Madrid. Or yes, of course I'm wearing a light shirt right now. It's the truth. There is no second guessing here. This is what we do most of the time. And we have got to get to a point where we understand that our introverted thinking makes mistakes. Our way of seeing reality, our way of creating a system is not always right. And it will probably cause us more problems if we stick to it. So if you're open to that discussion, if you're open to that insight, ask yourself, what are those belief systems that you carry with yourself that are the reason for your constant stress? What is it? Maybe it's something that is outwardly observable, for example, by you working all the time, but it can also be that you hold on to a thought of, okay, I have to always give of myself. I have to neglect myself. I have to be that person that the other person wants me to be. And holding on to that and trying to convince somebody else that you're that 
that person, that is also the SE group. That in itself is stress one-on-one. -on -one. Because what is SE in that particular sense? It's our understanding of how reality is and us projecting it on the outside and saying, this is the only way I will connect with other people. So if you believe for some reason that you don't work hard enough, that you're too slow, that you have to do more than others, then the only way you'll show up in the real world is by showing that you work more because you're trying to prove a point. You're trying to live out this image of yourself that you think will be acceptable because who you really are isn't, right? If you, for example, think you're not being productive enough, what do you do? You're giving more than 100%. You're being under stress. You're not doing what is your normal pace. You're doing what you think is necessary because only that way you will be accepted by others. Only that way it's okay for you to show up in the real world. And every single time we talk about showing up in the real world, it's always about SE. And the SE grip is holding on to a reality, showing up a particular way that you're not not willing to sacrifice for whatever happens. So if I always tell you, okay, you got to live the life you want and you have to decide who you want to be. And then this is the only way you show up. There has to be a part of you that is not up for debate. When I say this, I'm talking about things that you've chosen deliberately, things that you know are good for you, but trying to make other people believe that you're more productive than you really are is not that. That is something that your ego wants you to do. That is something that you keep on doing. You're putting yourself under stress. You're doing something that you actually know depletes you more and more. Remember, that's a great way of thinking of it. I cannot keep doing this for the rest of my life. Or if I continue doing this, I will be completely depleted. So let's back up a little bit. Remember how I said we have to be open to seeing those things. We have to be open to the fact that we have to reevaluate our way of living, that we have to reevaluate how we see the world. TI is not that strong. That's just the facts. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you don't always rely on that, the easier it's going to be. As long as we keep believing that our TI is right, we keep on living in the NITI loop. Meaning we have this image of how we want to feel. We have a value system of this is the right thing to do. And then we express it to the outside. And this is the only way it's going to go. But because the truth is that you actually do feel like you're not being productive enough. The truth is that you may feel like you're not really that kind person. That's why you don't deserve good things because you do things that are not that perfect, but you want other people to think that that's the only way they would accept you. Nobody would accept you with your flaws, with you being somebody who's maybe selfish from time to time, who thinks about her or himself, somebody who is not doing all they can do. And you're not that workaholic person that everybody would say about, Oh, she or here's the hardest worker. I know, you know who you really are. And there's a discrepancy between how you show up and how you you actually feel inside. And if you're willing and open to look at it, this is the key to everything. One of the main things I never wanted people to see is that I actually had a lot of strength because I didn't want to use it. I didn't want to be the one who pushes forward for my life because then I would have to take responsibility for it. I also thought if I live this out, I will make people feel bad about themselves. I will show them that they're not doing anything about their life. That's the value system I've been brought up with. Those are the things that I I have learned as a child that the only way I would get accepted is if I put myself last, if I make myself small in order to let other people shine. So what did I do when I grew up? I kept repeating this pattern because the thought of letting people see that side of me, that side that may be stronger than them, that side that is more determined, that side that wants to fight for herself first. If I would show that to people, they would see how dark my soul actually is, how ugly and unrefined it is. And that this version of me would be in no way acceptable or loved. I was so scared of this that I was willing to do whatever it takes to convince other people of the image that I was presenting. And I'm sure you have this too. These are the biggest causes of INFJ stress, hands down, no matter how it comes out in your life. It doesn't matter if it's about being more productive. It doesn't matter
matter if it's about being perfect or kinder or whatever it is, it always goes back to this. Because we as INFJs, our first function is introverted intuition. That's a function that if you allow yourself to really live through it and enjoy it the most, it comes with a very slow pace on the inside. All people who are into meditation, who are all into living in the moment, enjoying life and creating abundance without having all that stress, they're all leaning into introverted intuition. That's what it's all about. We can decide the pace that we want because if we would look at the basis of all of it, of what we really want, it's to have peace, it's to feel enough, it's to feel like we're valued and our opinion matters. These are some of the things that we universally crave, but how we go about it, these are the stress factors in our life. And as long as we're not willing to look at ourselves and understand that we probably are making mistakes and we're over open to adjusting our belief systems, we will always go back to this place where we're trying to convince others to give us a validation for something that we would have wanted years ago, decades ago, probably. When I was this hardcore in my SE grip and I wanted to convince the world and certain people that I'm a good person, I was going overboard. I was neglecting myself. I was way kinder to others than I was ever towards myself because I felt if I would put myself first, like I would be selfish and this is not acceptable. And the solution won't be to tell yourself, oh, okay, you're a good person, don't worry. Or to say, oh, you are productive enough. You don't have to work twice as much just to produce the same amount of results. You're good enough. This is never going to work because on a subconscious level, you don't believe that. You do believe that you're not a good person. You do believe that you're not being productive enough or that you probably are lazier than you should be. Those belief systems, which are of course always subjective because there is no thing or person or anybody who could tell you you're a good person or you're not good a person because there are always going to be situations where you decide, oh, I could have acted kinder or I could have worked more. I could have been more productive. Who decides when you're productive or not or when you're lazy or not? There is no right or wrong here unless Unless we're talking about, okay, somebody who kills somebody is a bad person. Like these kind of things we can all agree on, but in the normal rounds, these are not things that can easily be determined. So what do you do in order to get out of that grip? Well, the solution is probably the last thing we want to do. It is to lose the game. It is to actually live out that part of us that we're so scared. To show. It's showing up in a way where that person would actually think that we're a bad person. It's showing up in a way where that person would actually think that we're not being productive, that we're being lazy or whatever it is that you're trying to hide from, whatever it is that you're trying to convince others you're not because it's not about them. If you have a problem with that person thinking that you're not a good person, it's because you don't believe you're a good person. If you have a problem with that person thinking you're not being productive, it's because you don't feel like you're being productive. This is something that is so easily overlooked. I always choose an example of let's say you're in a meeting room and you always feel like your colleagues are thinking about the fact that you're not being productive or that you're not having the greatest handwriting or whatever it is that you're worried about. Those are the things you focus on. You're never thinking about that one colleague that sits on the end of the table that probably thinks, oh, I don't like her shirt or I don't like the way she wears her hair. These are things that we don't care about. And when I say we, I don't mean INFJs altogether. I just mean in this example, I don't care about my shirt. I like my shirt. I think the shirt I chose is great. I like the way my hair is. So I'm not even thinking about if other people would judge me for that. There are people who think they're too short. I never had a problem in my life about my height. But there are people who do have that problem and they're just as tall as me. Like this is just so individually us. And so we focus on the people who might think that. So I'm sure I've met people in my life who thought, oh, okay, I'm short, but I've never even thought of that. I've never looked out for that. So it just went by like nothing. So all of those things that you see all the time, that you feel like get you into stress mode, that get you into the SE grip of having to prove something, these are on your mind because you're still trying trying to convince them of something that you're not. And the way out of that is to exactly do that, to look at what your biggest fear is in that moment and to let that other person see that part of you. It might feel impossible to you right now. Like this is the last thing you could do because it is such an ego hit. It really is something that our mind tries to protect us from, but we can lean into it. We can think about it. The more you confront your mind with it, the more you allow this to be a possibility in your mind. Mind. And the moment you can actually live it out, you change your SE grip. 
Remember, your SE grip and your stress factor is based on the fact that you show up as one particular way in the real world, the way other people could observe it, and it's a way that pulls you down. It's something that depletes your energy, it's something that you do that is not in alignment with who you are, and it's something that we feel like we still have to prove. And the moment you switch that, the moment you show up in a way where other people could see that biggest fear of yours, could really judge you for the things you think like are the worst things about you, that is the moment when you start accepting yourself, including this. Because before you can start loving yourself for who you really are, you have to be open to accepting that part of you. And I don't believe there's one day where you haven't accepted everything and then the next day you have accepted absolutely everything about you. That is a journey. That is something that keeps on growing with you. Every single time you're willing to reevaluate your value system, which is TI, you get to become a version that is more and more in alignment with who you really are. And in a lot of ways, switching that SE up has a lot to do with FE as well, which is our second function, so extroverted feeling. Remember, if you want to break out of the NITI loop, which in a lot of cases means you go NITI and you don't even go into your creative function, which is FE, which is representing how you want to feel right now, how you actually feel and not how you show up in order for other people to give you validation. And when we show up through our FE, it's always in combination with SE. It's always an underlying thing. Those are our extroverted functions. So you show up in the world and you represent an image of you. You let other people see you through the way you express your FE, through the way you show show up going to work and working in a pace that's comfortable for you and staying in a state where you feel like I will not apologize for this. I will go to work and I will be that self that I am and I will stay in this. This is where you express Effie. This is where you actually show a part of you when before it was all about, okay, I'm gonna hide as much as I can of me so I can't do anything for others to have a problem with me. Now it's the other way around. You actually express yourself as much as you can. You allow other people to see you for who you are, knowing that it will bring out all those things that you're afraid others will see. Through that, you break off the NITI loop. Through that, you get new information into your system because every single time you express something, there's always a feedback a new reality, new information that comes back into your system and you get to make new decisions about how you're gonna approach it the next time. We can completely live stress-free. I want you to be aware of this. And it's not a boring life. It's not a life where you're not being productive or a life where you don't experience great things or where you don't move enough or too little or whatever you're afraid of. It's just a life where you don't put any obligations on you that are not in alignment with who you want want to be. And I know this is a difficult journey. If we've been doing this for decades, you cannot change overnight. But if you take it on, it can change within months. That is the truth. And as long as you're open to look into those fears of yours, you can actually break free from all the stress and all the clutter that keeps you stuck, that keeps you depleted, that makes you feel like you have no other choice. You do have a choice, but it's about time we get to re-examine the way we see the world. We do make mistakes and that's okay. Let's express what we know so far, knowing that yes, it won't be perfect, knowing that people will judge us for it, but because we love ourselves, we're bringing it all out. We're not carrying all that weight with us anymore. And before you know it, stress, and I mean that real stress, that one that pulls you down, that one that makes it difficult for you to sleep, the one that makes you feel like what for, that part of you, that stress will fall off. And that's what I wish for you. And remember, when you want to take the next step in creating your epic life and you want my help in it, then work with me privately, all the information you find below. And if you want to watch another video now that is in line with today's topic, then watch the video on how to kick the NITI loop to the curb. Like always, guys, I wish you a wonderful day, a great week, and I talk to you next time. Bye.